This is FYI News 13, brought to you by SSP-TV and the Hazleton Standard Speaker. For your information, two members of the Freeland Crime Watch join us to discuss the dangers of drinking and driving. Hello everyone, we call this program FYI News 13. I'm Ken Carr and I appreciate the time you're spending with us. Here's your headlines for this Wednesday from FYI News 13 and the Hazleton Standard Speaker. A Nesquahoning patrolman has been charged with homicide by vehicle in connection with a fatal crash last May. According to our media partner, the Standard Speaker, 26-year-old Stephen Hamanko of Beaver Meadows was arraigned this morning in Lansford. He also faces charges of aggravated assault by vehicle, involuntary manslaughter and more. 69-year-old Carola Sars of Hazleton died in the two-vehicle crash on Route 209 between Nesquahoning and Jim Thorpe. She was a passenger in a vehicle driven by her husband, Michael, who was also critically injured. Hamanko, who was driving a Nesquahoning patrol car, lost control while attempting to negotiate a curve. The state office of the attorney general conducted a joint investigation with state police. State police determined that Hamanko was driving approximately 113 miles per hour prior to the crash. He was pursuing a woman who illegally passed another vehicle. Hamanko was placed on administrative leave following the crash. He was released on $100,000 on secured bail. His preliminary hearing is set for May 13th. He is a staunch proponent of after-school programs, and now State Senator John Udichak will co-chair a new bipartisan after-school caucus. The purpose of the caucus will be to provide education, policy development, research, and briefings on issues confronting and relating to the Commonwealth's after-school structure. Last December, Senator Udichak, along with Congressman Lou Barletta, announced plans to create a SHINE program in Luzerne County. SHINE stands for Schools and Homes in Education and is modeled after a successful program that has been operating in both Carbon and Schuylkill counties. The SHINE program is a way to build up our families, a way to build up our communities around the priority of education, making sure that our students are achieving. Last year alone in Luzerne County, 374 students dropped out of high school. Now that's 374 students that are dropping out of school, dropping out of our community, dropping out of our economy because the unemployment rate for those that do not have a high school diploma or a GED is over 20% when the state average and the national average is now below 6%. That means they are more of a burden on the, on the, on the social welfare system. They become a burden to our prison system, a burden to our community. We want to give people a chance to climb the economic ladder of prosperity. The SHINE program can do that. Hazleton Police Chief Frank DeAndrea was also on hand for yesterday's announcement. The Pennsylvania State House of Representatives voted 139 to 56 yesterday to reduce the size of the state legislature. State Representative Jerry Knowles is the prime sponsor of the House measure, which would reduce the state house from 203 to 151 members. The House also voted 146 to 49 to reduce the size of the state Senate from 50 to 37. However, the measure is far from becoming law. It must pass the Senate by the end of 2016 and then get through both chambers again by December. December of 2018. If that would happen, voters would have the ultimate say in the form of a referendum question on the ballot. Well, prom season is all about having fun. I danced to Puff Daddy until I couldn't even stand up, but it's also a time to remind students to stay safe so they have years of dancing and fun ahead of them. There's an event going on this weekend in Freeland to remind students of the dangers of drinking and driving. I spoke with two people who are helping put it together earlier this week, and the video you're about to see is from a mock DUI that took place in Pottsville. This upcoming weekend, the Freeland Ambulance, Freeland Fire Department, Freeland Crime Watch, and also the Freeland Police are holding a DUI awareness event. It's going to be a mock DUI scene. These are always very powerful events, and here to talk about it and tell you why you should come out and check this out, we have Donna Carosa and Teresa Carosa. We appreciate you guys being here. Donna and Teresa, both with the Freeland Crime Watch, and Teresa, you're also a junior firefighter in the borough. Donna, let's start with you. Why is this so important for the kids? I mean, it is prom season. You hit on that a little bit. Well, as a firefighter, you see a lot of car accidents going on, but especially this time of year, you have prom season coming up. Children feel they're invincible. They go out drinking after prom, and next thing you know, you have a major car accident on your hands, and you have fatalities. And children don't realize what's all involved in that. You're taking families away from families. Right. And, and, and we were talking about this, Teresa. Why did you get involved with the fire department? You said you're 16 years old. How did you get into it? Yeah. I got involved so I can help other people out and you know I see a lot of things every day you know with 
things going on in the fire department, and you just get more knowledge of what's going on and how to prevent it. And has it changed your perspective since you do see maybe accidents like this? How has it changed you? It changed me quite a bit because now I know what it's like to drive and what it could be like if something happened. You know, you just got to be careful out there on the road. And do you, do you think this event will help when if his kids do see this, you know, right before their eyes, even though it is a mock event? I think it will. Big change. And Donna, what else? You said for adults, too. I mean, this well, is open to the community. Why do you think it's important maybe for adults to come out, too? Well, adults and children alike feel they're invincible when they're drinking alcohol, and they don't realize the consequences and the actions. So I think that's important for them to come out and see. So that, again, is this weekend. It is May 9th on this Saturday. There's a rain date of May 10th in the borough of Freeland happening at 1 p.m. Let's talk about the Freeland Crime Watch before we sign off. If people are interested, they want to get involved, it's a great organization, how can they? They just come the first Monday of every month at 7 p.m. We have it over at the Freeland Senior Center, and everybody is welcome to come out and join us. Once they come, they give us their email. We keep them informed and up to date with all our events. So we thank you both very much for being here. Make sure you get out this weekend and check out the DUI awareness mock DUI scene. And that mock DUI scene is at the Freeland Street Department in their rear parking lot. A local author is looking to turn a book he authored into a musical. Gene Duffy, who uses the pen name Joseph Rothstein, wrote the book entitled As the Matzo Ball Turns. It chronicles the life of an inspiring actor. Duffy recently appeared on The Sam LaSan Show. Now, you're, you're taking this book and you're working with Dan DeMelfi, who is a very good friend of mine. Who, uh, he's writing music. For, now, how, do you, how are you going to make a musical out of this? How would I see this as a musical? We call it going from page to stage. And uh, when I was getting different feedback on the book, a lot of people said that would make a great musical or maybe TV show. And the musical idea really stuck with me. And it, it, the, the book has a great foundation, I think, for a show like this. And... Uh, that, that's the question of the day. I don't, I don't even know really, it's all kind of a blur, but the, the, the piece seemed to really write itself. And in an effort to raise money to make the musical, the Matza Have a Ball fundraiser will take place tomorrow from, 10, from 6 to 10 p.m. at Shenanigans in Lake Harmony. For more information, you can call 310-709-9935 and you can purchase the book at Amazon.com. A local student was recognized yesterday for a major academic achievement. Brandy Naprava, a student at the West Hazleton Elementary Middle School, was presented with a certificate of special congressional recognition by Congressman Lou Barletta. Naprava will compete in the Scripps National Spelling Bee in Washington, D.C. later this month. She won the regional spelling bee back in March. Congratulations to Brandy from everyone here at FYI. We wish you the best of luck in the National Spelling Bee, and everybody probably wishes you worked here because I'm a terrible speller. Well, later on FYI, Eric Schultz, a sports reporter from the Standard Speaker, joins me and we'll discuss the Mayweather-Pacquiao fight and local softball. And up next, Janine Mazurkevich launches a new segment all about healthy living. And since she's joined by Rob Gould, I'll bet they're going to talk about running once or twice. This is FYI News 13, brought to you by SSP-TV and the Hazleton Standard Speaker. We're going to focus on healthy lifestyle here on FYI News 13. We are here at the YMYWCA with Rob Gold. And there are many ways that you can get outside and enjoy the weather with your kids and live a healthy lifestyle this spring and summer. So Rob, thanks for having us in. I know you've been really excited about doing this segment, promoting running and uh, cross training. So thanks for having us in. Very excited about some great things happening this season. We have two race series, two separate series going on. One is being hosted by the Valley Running Club. It's called the Festival of Races. It consists of a lot of the 5Ks and 10Ks in our area. Uh, there are nine races in that series. The newest one that's been added was the Town and Trail. We have a half marathon distance race that we're going to be hosting at the end of the season. That's very exciting. It's going to be the first one that I know of that has ever been hosted here in the greater Hazleton area. Mm -hmm. uh, Festival of races, you have to compete in a minimum of three of the nine races and your time is what's important. It's your time off of the winner. So if you win the race, you have a time of zero or your time off. And this year we're doing one more change with how we score it. 
Uh, if it's a 10K race, it's going to be sized down. So like a one minute for a 5K is the equivalent of two minutes for a 10K. So there's a little formula there. Okay. So before we get into the competitive side, because we're going to see you every Wednesday here on FYI, you said there are two competitive and uh, sporting events that people can take part in. One is, um, you know, not only for running, but for also biking and swimming. A separate multi-sport race series that we've started this year, it's called the NEPA Endurance Fest Race Series. It's got races from our Y, the Hazleton Y, mm -hmm. uh, Wilkes-Barre Y, the Wilkes-Barre Triathlon, and the Wally Man Triathlon. So in total, there's six multi-sport races. The first two are duathlons, which is a run, bike, run, and the others are triathlons. Now the first one that we want to mention because the registration uh, is coming up is the Nescapec Duathon and that is May 17th, right? Yes, that's okay. when the, our Hazleton Y is hosting at the Nescapec State Park. Okay. So it's beautiful runs through the grassy trails at that park. It's a great place to train, take your kids, lake, there's a lake there. And then the road is a 16 mile road, Honey Hole Road, which is the best stretch of road around. We all complain and see a lot of potholes. That road was paved just two or three years ago, it's mm -hmm. in perfect shape. Okay, so there is a lot going on, not only for um, competitive runners, but if you're a starter, there are some great social sites uh, that are out there for you to get involved with, to ask questions. And uh, what are some of those Facebook pages? Well, I'll give some credit to Frank Romero and yeah. Dr. Jim Diem, two of the newer race directors in our area. So they've been promoting group runs, uh, either at the Rails of Trails or in the Cunningham Valley. They put it up on a Facebook page. They have different pace groups, everything from like 12 minute miles to eight minute miles. Mm -hmm. And it's just people getting together at a certain time to start off on a run. All right, so you can check those out right on your screen. Again, join us each and every week here, Wednesdays on FYI. We're living healthy through spring and summer. Time now for FYI News 13 weather. Well, you go to bed one night in Pennsylvania and you wake up the next morning and it's spring. April showers bring May flowers. I don't know what May showers bring, but we had some today. Beautiful shot there from Sam LaSant Jr. Let's check out our local forecast from the National Weather Service. Tonight, cloudy, then gradually becoming partly cloudy. Our low will be around 51 degrees. We'll have a calm wind. On the extended forecast, Thursday looks partly sunny with a high near 73 degrees. Thursday night will be partly cloudy. Our low will be 57. Friday, we get up to 77 degrees. It's going to get better over the weekend. Friday night, partly cloudy with a low around 57. And then on Saturday, mostly sunny with a high near 79. Saturday night, partly cloudy, low around 60. Sunday, we have a 30% chance of showers and thunderstorms, but mostly a partly sunny day, if that makes any sense, with a high near 78 degrees. Sunday night, mostly cloudy with a low around 62 degrees. Tonight's weather is brought to you by Valley High, the area's oldest ice cream and fast food restaurant. Stop on in for a cold treat, including our ice cream and yogurt, or some hot food, including our burgers, hot dogs, fries, and much more. That's Valley High, Route 93 in West Hazleton. Treat yourself today. Now you're looking at your midday winning Pennsylvania lottery numbers on our green screen. Pick 208, pick 3772, pick 4, 4363, and pick 5, 67948. We welcome Eric Schultz from the Standard Speaker back to FYI next on Sports. And also a reminder that our winning lottery numbers here on FYI brought to you by Boyer Insurance Agency with two locations to serve you. One is on Sugarloaf Avenue in Cunningham and the other is in Nescapec on Broad Street. You can reach them in Cunningham at 570-788-3543 and in Nescapec at 570-752-7683. This is FYI News 13 Sports. It's another Dave day on FYI, but pinch hitting for Dave this week. We have Eric Schultz from the Standard Speaker back on the show. Eric is covering the Hazleton Area Lady Cougar softball team. We're going to get into that, but we're starting with boxing. And of course, we're talking about Mayweather and Pacquiao over the weekend. Eric, you said you didn't get a chance to see it. I waited all day for it. Haven't watched a fight since Tyson McNeely. I was so excited. And I think like a lot of people, I was very let down. And I think it's interesting because I talked with younger kids that day, some of my younger cousins. All people wanted to talk about was UFC going into this fight. And I don't think it was the best advertisement, maybe, for boxing. Now, Eric has covered Golden Gloves 
in the area. This was your first time covering boxing. What was it like when you walked in there? Were you impressed by the numbers, impressed by the kids? What, what did you see? Yeah, yeah. Um, the Hazleton area has a bunch of kids, and it's mostly, I, I would say, the teenager range, but there's a few outliers on the bottom and top side of age. Uh, and the, every time I've been down there to talk to, uh, uh, to the, the boxers or the trainers or anybody working uh, at the Hazleton program, uh, they, they show up in large numbers, and they're all working hard um, on the bags or in the sporting ring. And uh, you can see that they're really into it. And it, it's kind of interesting because I don't think in a lot of other areas there are kids so much uh, so into boxing as much as around here. And we're lucky we have Tim Witherspoon, of course, the Hazleton Area Boxing Club. Is it something you see yourself getting into? Like, do you go there and say, all right, this might be a sport that I, I could jump into? Does it get you excited like that? Uh, yes and no. I mean, uh, it's one thing to see, uh, you know, kids striving to be great and working hard like in the area. That's always cool to see. But, uh, you know, with, at, at the professional level, the big fights you want to see with the $100 pay-per-views and fights that could be flops or not, it, it's, it's tough to get into, the, into it, especially when it's not as – unless you have a fight as big as Mayweather and Pacquiao, you don't hear too much about the sport. So, uh, you know, if it's not right in front of the national spotlight, it can be tough to get into. On the same page here, Eric. And let's move on to the Hazleton area Lady Cougar softball team honing in on a division title in the Wyoming Valley Conference. Eric, you've been following them all year long. What really sticks out to you about this group? You jumped in to, to start covering them. What, what jumps out at you every game? Uh, I would say they, they can hit up anywhere in the lineup, but I would say the top four spots or so uh, can, can really kill a team. Uh, it might not happen until the very end. There's two games where the cleanup hitter, uh, Megan Triple Piece, uh, had a game-winning hit or another clutch moment. Moment, but they, they can strike at any time, uh, one through four, and it, getting a leadoff spot or the first two people on is all you need sometimes to blow the door open on a team and kind of knock the wind out of them. Do you think down the stretch here, they said they've had some hard luck losses. They have a few games left. I think last one at Berwick, second place in the division right now. I think the Lady Cougars can get it done in this division. You think they have the closing power? Yeah, uh, every game I've seen, you might, they might have one ending with a few miscues or errors. But uh, for the most part, they're very solid. And I, I, I think their overall consistency on the defensive end is what's really going to help them out down the stretch. And if they play like they have, have been playing at the games I've been at, uh, I, I think they have a really good chance of going for it this year. Eric, I've been around the team a few times, a few times last year. What is it like covering them? They seem like a fun group. Yeah, yeah, they're, they're fun. They're always up against the dugout fence, even if they're, uh, you know, just rebounding from bad inning. And uh, you, you never know, you know, when they're going to jump out and score some runs or make some big plays. And it, it's definitely not a boring team. <laughs> Eric, we appreciate you being here. If you want to follow Lady Coors, do you post updates on Twitter or anything? Uh, yes, I do. All right, where can they follow you? Uh, my Twitter handle is my last name, Schultz, uh, without a C, and uh, underscore Eric. All right, so check out Eric on Twitter and in the Standard Speaker and on standardspeaker.com. All right, we're moving on to our FYI Standard Speaker scoreboard reminder brought to you by Sand Springs Country Club Golf Course. Take the afternoon off. It's $25 to golf after 1 p.m. all this week. That includes a cart, and oh yeah, Wednesday is 50 cent wing night. If you don't see me here tomorrow, I'm probably at Sand Springs for the afternoon golf special. Here is your FYI Standard Speaker scoreboard. Marion baseball team, they suffered their first Schuylkill League loss of the season to Division II Schuylkill Hayes but the Colts will win Division Three and make the league playoffs next week. Also in the Schuylkill League, Blue Mountain was one run better than North Schuylkill. Pottsville, they beat Tamaqua, and in the Wyoming Valley Conference, MMI lost their second straight to Hanover area. In softball, MMI and Monoy area were winners. Hazleton area got a sweep in their final track and field league meet of the season. The Cougars lost to Nanakoke in boys volleyball. And the Lady Cougars, they take a loss to Crestwood in lacrosse. Well, the bats came alive for the Iron Pigs on Tuesday against Louisville. Russ Kanzler came into the game as a pinch hitter. He went 0 for 1. And finally, the Rail Riders. They lost on Tuesday to Gwinnett, but then today they rebounded and they get the 5-3 victory over Gwinnett on Wednesday afternoon. It's Wednesday and here's some delicious alliteration. It's Signature Steak Night at Bottlenecks. All their signature steaks are only $9.95 plus bottomless soup and salad for only $2.95. Good evening, everyone, and here's tonight's Talk of the Town report. First tonight, the Miller Keystone Blood Center, the community group serving as the blood provider for Lehigh Valley Hospital in Hazleton, will be holding a blood drive Tuesday, May 12th from 1 to 6 p.m. at Holy Rosary Parish in Hazleton. The parish is located at 240 South Poplar Street. 
For more information or to register in advance, please call 1-800-BA-DONOR or check out giveapint.org. And one more quick announcement, the Ashland American Legion Post 343 will be holding its annual golf tournament Saturday, June 27th at Rolling Meadows Golf Club. They'll be currently seeking golfers and sponsors. For more information about this tournament, just call 570-875-3428. At Snites, Talk of the Town. News 13 would like to send sincere condolences to the family and friends of these recently departed. Corey Meister of Hazleton, Funeral is Friday at 9.45 a.m. from the Boyle Funeral Home. Friends may call Thursday from 6 to 8 p.m. and Friday from 8.30 to 9.30 a.m. Dennis E. Fisher of Hazleton. Memorial is Saturday at 12.30 p.m. from the Belts Petrilli Funeral Home. Eugene J. Doherty of Delano. Services were held privately and under the direction of the Lamar Christ Funeral Home. Hannah Lefsuk, formerly of Whitehaven. Graveside service will be held Thursday at 10 a.m. in the Laurel Cemetery. Friends may call Thursday at 9.30 a.m. in the Lehman Family Funeral Service. And Margaret Ann Potter of Hazleton. Arrangements will be announced by the Turnbach Funeral Home. He is the president of the Schuylkill County Chamber of Commerce. So thanks for having us. Thank you, Janine. Pleasure to have you back. All right. So let everyone know what is going on in Schuylkill County here with the Chamber of Commerce. Well, we've had another tremendous year here at the Schuylkill Chamber, uh, culminating today with the annual luncheon. President Karen Kennerdine has just had a very robust year. Uh, we're working on a, a new uh, chamber membership program. Uh, it's a tiers level program where we're emphasizing our value added services and different levels of play for chamber membership. We're really excited to be rolling that out. We began that in April. Uh, as we come to the banquet today, we're honoring five award winners, businessman, businesswoman, organization of the year, nonprofit organization of the year, and entrepreneur of the year. Uh, and as we roll into the end of the fiscal year, we'll be honoring them again at a breakfast in June. So it's been a great year. Uh, as always, we have a lot of events and uh, we continue to uh, serve our business and nonprofit community. For those who may not know or newcomers to the area, what are the benefits of joining the Chamber of Commerce? Well, again, the obvious one is networking. We're networking a lot of businesses and nonprofits together, but we have a, just a litany of value-added services. We believe we're the leaders in government advocacy, including transportation issues. Uh, we have a great member services committee, always developing new services, educational opportunities, uh, agribusiness committee. So no matter what walk of business or nonprofit segment you come from, uh, we're here to help your needs. All right, and we'll join you every Thursday here on FYI, focusing on the Schuylkill Chamber of Commerce. Attention pay-per-view subscribers, if you see your name right now on News 13, you'll have 13 minutes to call in and win a free movie from Service Electric Cablevision. Our winner tonight is Mike Holshue of Ashland. Mike, if you're watching, give us a call right now, 570-455-7267, extension 104. Thanks for watching FYI tonight. We'll be back again tomorrow. See you then. Take it easy, everyone.